Hey guys, it's Henry and Nelson, and we're the Flat Six Media Guys. We're back with one of the most coveted and mysterious cars you may not even know existed. The Audi RS6. Part 4, the 2020 C8. If you're new to the channel, hit subscribe and click the bell. So now let's get into the C8. The C8 2020 RS6 Avant is the latest and greatest RS6 ever made by Audi and it's finally making its way to the States. It's expensive, it's nimble, it's hella fast. And at over $100,000 it's definitely an exclusive for those that can get it. So what cars is this RS6 targeting? Well, nothing less than the Mercedes AMG 63 wagon and the Porsche Panamera Turbo S Sport Turismo. Now the exterior is it subtle? Nope. Is it aggressive? Yes. And is it good looking? Absolutely. In the front, you got a honeycomb grille, tinted headlights, and big air inlets for the turbos. Uh, and in the back, you got the classic large oval exhaust pipes, but this time they're actual exhaust pipes and not the trend where Audi has been giving you something that looks like exhaust pipes. The wheels in this car are 22 whole inches and the brakes are big 10 piston carbon ceramic brakes. They're lighter yet more powerful than your standard steel brakes. The lights are nothing short of amazing. With the laser matrix lighting system, it can dynamically control what beam shines at oncoming traffic, in effect preventing you from blinding the car that's coming at you while you'll still get the high beam visibility that you need in a car that's this freaking fast. The drive itself now at 4,600 pounds, she's heavy, but again, she's nimble. Uh, Audi moves this big beast around with its super popular and capable all-wheel drive Quattro system. With the Quattro system, the power to the wheels rests at a sensible 40% to the front and 60% to the rear where the rear wheel bias, but it can't throw 70% of that power to the front when it needs it, and even more impressive is it can do 85% of that power to the back wheels while leaving a measly 15% of the power at the front. Now, as with the previous generation, the engine itself hasn't changed. The RS is still running with a powered 4.0 liter twin turbo V8 engine, but now it's also boosted by a 48 volt mild hybrid system, which can recover up to 16 horsepower from the output of the car. Just the same, the hybrid engine controlled the Audi's on off function, meaning when you were at a stop, it would turn the car off and you didn't need to continue to burn gas while you were just at a red light or a stop sign. However, the second you pulled your foot off the brake and you went to hit the accelerator, the engine would give you what it needed because it used that battery power to, in effect, get going and then the engine would click on and continue on its way. The engine also utilizes a cylinder on demand system, the car can disable four out of the eight cylinders. This helps you with overall gas efficiency uh, and at the same time just the efficiency of the motor because you don't have to uh, be going through all 500 and change horsepower at any given moment just because you're going to the grocery store. Now, this powertrain produces a fantastic 591 horsepower, which is up from the 552 from the previous gen, which we can attribute to that mild hybrid system. And yet, it still brings the 590 pound-feet of torque that's available between the 21 and 4500 RPM range. This all comes mated to the brand new 8-speed ZF automatic transmission, and yes, with launch control. Now the acceleration, it goes zero to 60 in 3.6 seconds. Uh, and as a standard, uh, the top speed is limited to 155 miles per hour. But if you get the optional dynamic ride control, that gives you more room to get up to 189 miles per hour. The RS6 also brings in the adaptive air suspension system. Now, it defaults to run the car closer to the ground than your standard A6, but it can go lower for stability when you're going at high speeds. It actually drops an additional 20 millimeters. And if you are going at slow speeds, it will actually raise itself up. Now, it, the drive selection function where you can make this determination is gonna be based off the configurable RS1 or RS2 modes, which are activated by the RS mode button positioned right on the steering wheel. This also adjusts the engine and handling response of the car. The interior is perfect and elegant. There are two types of people in this world, those that love and enjoy the look of piano black plastic in the interior, and those who can't stand looking at smudges uh, because they had to turn up the volume to listen to their music, or in, some, in many cases, just NPR. Audi has pulled in the digital in the best ways possible. You get uh, a lot of screen real estate. The important stuff is right where you want and need it, in the dash. The two screen setup is proper with the climate controls on the bottom panel and your options for media and entertainment on the top. Now Audi's virtual cockpit puts all the relevant information you need while you fly down the road, nice, big, and in the center. The truth is that many car makers struggle to get the right presentation that feels current uh, and intuitive enough for today's drivers. 
but Audi's MMI system does a pretty good job. Uh, however, if you'd rather stick with the double you know, meaning your iPhone or your Joy device, it's okay. The Audi does come standard with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Many brands are going with the more minimalistic look as inspired by the Tesla, but Audi continues to say, nah, we can do this our way and it's gonna be great, and it is. Ultimately, this is a car that you can drive anywhere for any reason. She can go fast in a straight line, she cuts corners, fights to the snow, she can cruise down the highway when you go from state to state, all while still maintaining the practical appeal of finding storage as you get from the wagon parks. So why did Audi decide to make the RS6 Avant an option in the States? Well, maybe it's because, honestly, the car market in the US is seeing a shift. Right? The sedan, although not dead, isn't the king it once was. People want the, the efficiency, but they also want power, maneuverability, and the storage ability like hauling bikes, tents, whatever and whenever, right? CUVs and SUVs, and honestly, wagons provide that in a way that sedans and coupes just don't. So you either have uh, a coupe and an SUV, or you can combine the two, like you get with the RS6 Avant, and you get your sedan wagon, and you've married the two cars in a much lower profile.